What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Savage Land. Welcome to another episode of Soapbox. My weekly commentary show where I pretty much just uh, comment on what I've seen throughout social media, throughout the action figure community, the toy community, and just pop culture in general. I like the way the episode went last week. I like the content. I like the speed. I like the subject matter. And uh, that's the way I'm pretty much going to run it for now on. Um, I know you guys are probably saying like, well, I don't think too much change, but it's me being a hard critic on myself. The last two or three months of doing this show, trying to get this series going, the last week it finally like, okay, it clicked on how, how I want to do this, man. And I, and I just felt really good about that episode and I felt that's the way uh, and the speed and the lane I need to run in uh, to do start doing these things, man. So let's get right into it. Let's get right into community. Like I said, pretty much what I've seen on social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, uh, pretty much just anywhere on my own personal Facebook channel, man. So let's jump right into it with the first thing. And I was actually going to put this on last week's episode. Uh, when Tupac was in jail, Jim Carrey used to write him funny letters to make him smile. Jim was Tupac's favorite actor. And I, I started thinking about this, and I was like, you know what, Tupac was really a, a talented uh, guy. He, he, could, he could do more than just, you know, your average B-list black movies in those days, because no matter how good a black movie was in cinema, it was still B-listed, like Poetic Justice and Juice and things of those natures, which in Juice and Poetic Justice, he should have had an Academy Award nominee or some type of Golden Globe or something just for the authentic authenticity of his characters and the intensity of his character especially in juice that was just almost like shakespearean uh in a way a modern day shakespearean of uh friends and betrayal and things of that nature but i think if tupac was in a film with jim carrey it would have been cool to see him in a buddy cop film almost kind of like in a rush hour type manner with jim carrey being able to adapt to any scene he could possibly adapt to and tupac being able to do the same thing as well but making those two both both of those blend i think that would have been a vehicle that would have took tupac to the next level a guy named uh, marvelous action figure space and i did a photo from him last week and uh he usually posts his uh figures up on a glass table so it kind of gives like a mirror image sometimes but it's pretty dope it pretty much doesn't change it's all about the pure posing with this guy and he has the 20th anniversary captain america with black widow doing a very very acrobatic upside down split on his uh back now he has another thing on this instagram post where he actually shows the live uh, uh, the live reaction of him uh, putting Black Widow on top of Captain America let you know there's no sticky putty there there's nothing there that's just him getting busy man and I think I think that's dope I think that's dope he did he does do does great pictures got a marvelous action figures pose on my Instagram so check him out Ooh, uh, I seen this um, on my Facebook X Men's Attic group and the guy says I don't know about y'all about you all but i can't wait till september to this comes out and it's predator versus wolverine i'm getting my comic book fever back to where i want to collect comics and i'm definitely down for this um i, I don't know if it's a real book or not uh, but it, i guess it is it looks like it but i'm down for this weapon x uh versus uh Wolver i mean versus a predator yeah uh th th this looks dope I, I actually can't wait so in september i'll be looking for predator versus wolverine and uh hopefully you guys are too Oh, on the toy hunt uh, tip, I was doing some work down in Clinton, North Carolina this week, a uh, smaller town that's about a good 45 minutes away from where I live. And uh, of course, on the way back, I love small town Walmarts. They're like uh, hidden treasure chests. I uh, went to a little, did a little grocery shopping before I got home because I didn't want to get back to my home city and, and go to the grocery store. So I hit Walmart. And of course, I said, let me see what's on the toy aisle. And I went down there and uh, pretty much found some goodies, man. That, that Walmart was pretty stocked up. I, did, I, I, I like when I'm surprised by toys. Like I forgot about this uh, Rey Mysterio with the headdress. When I seen him last year, uh, at Comic-Con, I thought, you know, that, that's something I might be interested in. And when I seen him, beautiful figure, beautiful figure. And then what else caught me by surprise? I forgot about this Moss Man. See, I'm about tapped out with um, Masters of the Universe Origins. I'm still liking that that body because I still like the WWE superstars. But uh, every now and then something gets me by surprise and really uh, I gravitate to, uh, I pick it up. So I picked up this Moss Man and uh, Rey Mysterio Ultimates, which were two great grabs. 
like I said once before, uh, there's a guy here on G.I. Joe Classified Elite, and I, I don't know who he's talking about, but he says, so where's the guy that said they won't clearance these because it, it would clearance them all out, which that would be awesome. They need to be cleared out. And that is what, it's what's going to happen, my friend. And he has a Lady J here for $9, which he should have been under $10. Oh, uh, man. I'll give them benefit of the doubt six months ago. I was about to say a year ago, but six months ago, ladies J, you should be able to buy her for less than 10. Ooh. This photo right here is dope. Uh, damn. I don't know if it was G.I. Joe Classified Elite or G.I. Joe Classified Uncensored, but I'm pretty sure this was Elite. And this is a guy named Chris Crilly. And this picture is magnificent. This is this is movie set type stuff right here and it's a picture of shipwreck on top of a bar with a bunch of cobras going around him and cheering him on and it says tequila and rest in peace to paul rubens um great 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 talent uh I, the biggest thing i remember about pb herman is just the special effects the clay effects they used to have with the eyes would get real big like whoa and it was kind of like a weird dark comedy almost in a sense but hey that was the 80s and the biggest thing i remember about him is stopping at one of those old uh, roadside attractions like uh on route 66 like the big dinosaurs and the uh big uh, paul bunyan the blue ox things of that nature that have extinct since then roadside attractions that would help people get through the country as they traveled on the highways throughout the 1950s and 60s before before the highways just got overcrowded and there was more interstates and things of that nature. You could take your time and chill. But uh, <laughs> what I think about when I see this picture is that... <laughs> Tequila. <laughs> All right, my man, uh, Jarrell Heslop. Um, actually, I went to high school with this dude. And um, he, he also has another YouTube channel also... Uh, Jarrell's Journals. If you can, check that out. Uh, he's pretty much uh, on his path to try to be a sports analyst. Just dealing with sports commentary and things of that nature. But this was just on our regular Facebook post. And he says, but what's the first movie that comes to mind when you see this? And with all the movies popped up, I was like, damn, you know what? I do think of that. But me, and I, the first movie, the first movie, the first movie for all these other movies was Friday the 13th, not Friday the 13th, Nightmare on M Street with Freddy Cougar. When that house and ladder starts coming together on the screen, I was like, oh, it's about to be something crucial. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's me thinking at four or five years old because that's the first time I've seen that house. But let's talk about the other movies that come to mind. House Party. That's kind of like the next movie that comes when the house starts coming together. Ninja Turtles. Uh, What else? Friday, <laughs> the movie. Uh, that's why I said Friday the 13th. There was, a, there was another movie too. Uh, but a, a, lot of, a lot of movies come to mind when you start seeing that house come together like this. <laughs> you, you, you're like, oh shit, I'm in, I'm in for a goodie. So New Line Cinemas, um, great great production company, been around for a long time and they, they definitely are pop culture. All right, uh, this is piggybacking off last week uh, with the Valiverse truck, uh, the Vanguard. And they decided to go with a khaki tan color, but they just wanted to see people's feedback on the dark gray green or black um i think the tacky can is uh tacky can <laughs> got you again i did that on accident uh the khaki tan is good uh but uh the green fits with me and the dark gray for some odd reason i just don't like the black murdered outlook i don't think this is a a, a truck that looks good in that color i i, I like uh i like the more earth tones and the dark uh, charcoal uh, gunmetal gray but uh definitely still a good looking truck man i'm definitely still going to pick one of these up i think it'll look sweet with the large influx of vehicles that are coming out in six inch scale man so it's a beautiful time what a time to be alive baby also as far as new toys uh up for pre-order um what i was pretty much interested in and every time i i mention toys that are coming out on this channel i basically speak on things that i'm truly interested in and i know if i'm interested in a hundred more people are interested in and if a hundred more people are interested in i know a thousand more so whatever group we are that are interested in these toys that's what i share from my point of view and what came up with is x-men 97 um i'm liking this i'm feeling this um will i get all of this of this first wave no because i don't think i need it and i was watching um foosh earlier today because today is saturday 
and uh he was basically saying like these are upgrades if you need upgrades you want to upgrade it bishop go ahead and grab them if you think you uh need an updated storm which i do i only have the uh black uh suited storm comic book storm that's out uh and i don't have the white so i need a white storm i don't care if she has the mohawk i think that's cool that's she'll set her apart differently from the uh black one that i got and uh wolverine I can't never get enough of Wolverines. Apparently, I'm a Wolverine variant collector just like Snake Eyes and just like Hulk Hogan and just like a whole other number one guy. So, uh, this Wolverine looks good to me. And be honest with you, it comes to a point like, why the hell did they make that cell shaded line? I don't have that Wolverine and that's just something I just didn't think I, I needed. And lo and behold, this this when I see this, this is the cartoon Wolverine right here. Not that cell shaded uh, uh, one. And especially with the oversized cow, that's how it was in the cartoon, man. And I think he looks phenomenal. The only thing I'm worried about is, how's his claws going to be, man? Because it looks like he has those, those like, almost kind of, like, uh, cylinder-type claws. And I like the thick uh, butcher blade-type claws that he came out with. Uh, with the, I forget which one. I know Weapon X, the, uh, not Weapon X, uh, X-Force Wolverine, the black and gray Marvel Legends Wolverine had the thicker claws. And that's uh, pretty much what I want on this figure. So hopefully he does, man. But we'll see. The bishop looks good. That's definitely a, a dope bishop. We needed a new bishop. The uh, old one is going for a lot of money on the aftermarket. And this is a good new rendition of them. This, I think the storm looks good. I think uh, Gambit looks good. All of them look good. Magneto. But Mayfax, look, I'm not, I'm not doing no plastic cake. Okay, with Magneto, Mayfax, it looks like it has the definitive uh, Magneto for me. It's actually my pile of loot. So I'm just waiting on that to drop, and that'll be my main Magneto, the centerpiece on my X-Men villain shelf. So uh, Marvel Legends X-Men 97, um, it, it's out uh, to be pre-ordered. I pre-ordered mine on Big Bad Toy Store. It looks like you can pretty much get them anywhere, fan channel. looks like they'll also be in the store because the lesser, like, uh, five-point articulation figures have come out in stores already. They're already on the pegs. The stuff they were showing at Comic Con is already in, in stores. So look out for those, man, if you're if you're interested in them. But I think it's a pretty cool line, and uh, I hope the cartoon lives up uh, to the old one. All right, so this is Gridiron Studios here. I said I wasn't purchasing any more Gridiron Studios, and um, I seen this on Instagram. Who put this up here? I believe my man Steve O. My my man, my man Steve O. Eighty Eighty put this up of the Gridiron Studios One Twelve. Um, throne and it's a throne pretty much made out of guns just like the uh, Game of Thrones throne is made out of swords and this is dope but once again gridiron is like $90 like 55 60 I might give this thing a go man but I just think $90 is way too much but it's fire sitting up there with Major Blood looks like he's the number one candidate to sit in that throne he has Destro which I can see Destro too but sometimes Destro is a little bit too posh this is something Major Blood would be sitting on ammo for his feet to rest on and his back resting on some rifle barrels you know so th this is dope right here but gridiron they do their thing man just just they're just a little bit pricey for me but who knows we'll see what's up with this maybe i will pull the trigger on this but if you're looking for it it's 90 dollars on gridiron studios and i believe it, it's it's ready to go it's up ready to be uh re ready to be purchased this is where uh, pop culture and my collecting comes full circle Hip-hop golden era 80s and 90s asked the question, Voltron versus Optimus Prime. And hip-hop and comic books really kind of go one in the same, especially with the graffiti art. The character way of drawing with graffiti is, is similar to almost like comic style in a, in a sense, man. So it's really one in one. But I'm not really a huge Transformers fan, and um, I remember Voltron from the 80s. Uh, but if I would have to say who would win between these two, I would say Optimus Prime because he's a warrior, um, and 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 he he is that being. Voltron has to be put together by five different beings. What what if somebody's not acting right one day? You got you got two limbs, two arms, the body, and and whoever's the fucking heads like, uh, nah, I ain't going up there, man. I don't feel like doing that shit. I ain't doing it today. You're done. You know what I'm saying? So you need five participants to participate. If, if that's how many lines it takes to make Voltron. But make a long story short, you need more than one person to make that decision. Optimus Prime is a born warrior. Even if he didn't transform to the truck, he would be his... Um, uh, I forgot the name of the planet. He, he would be in that form as a warrior. He would not be not be worrying about trying to turn into a truck or any of that shit to disguise himself. He would be battling. That's what he does. And he's a leader. He's not a private. This man is a general. 
um wherever he, uh damn why i can't think of the transformers planet <laughs> man uh wherever he's from man um so uh I, I think optimus prime i think he i think he'll blow a damn hole through voltron this also right here real quick is a guy who said he refunded his gi joe dragonfly because he had too many pre-orders up of things coming so he canceled his <laughs> I really don't agree with this because all your other pre-orders will be there um, but I, I wouldn't necessarily say I don't agree with this but you can do whatever you want to do but I wouldn't do that I would give the dragonfly a go if I didn't like it I know as a shadow of a doubt I could sell it and get my money back I do know that because you know the uh, the interior of this some, some of these has is the flipper game the flipper Frank game <laughs> ain't that mad hatter say flipper Frank the flipping game which I don't knock it hey do your thing um, so I, I would I would have waited on that and all these other pre-orders. I mean Jesus Christ I mean they, they come to mass retail you could guarantee get these at cost or less Like no bullshit and even if they went up They wouldn't be as much as that that has lab would go up or the rarity of it, man So I, I don't agree with this at all, man Also from hip-hop golden eras 80s and 90s. It says skinny jeans are not hip-hop and I don't know if they're hip hop or not, but I do know they will give you a yeast infection. And I don't care if you're a male. You want to know why? Because if you're wearing skinny jeans, you're a pussy. Also, coming up, uh, Cobra Eels are about to ship from Amazon. I got my order about to ship, hopefully. Um, I didn't have any money on that card, man. I had to switch a credit card to it. I'm not missing out on these. I don't care what I'm going through. I got to get these. I switched the credit card over to them. And uh, hopefully, my Eels will be arriving August 8th on a Tuesday. Well, what a thing with G.I. Joe now, where things are showing up two, I mean, two months early, man. That's really kind of messing a lot of people up, man. You, you, your scheduling gets off. But I'm glad glad these will show up if they do we'll see and i want to run back through uh this mayfax daredevil um i don't know some people are not feeling it man i don't see the problem with it i like it i think he looks cool he's gonna come with that uh that baton system set up with the wire in it like a uh, nightwing did and um head the head looks a little long <laughs> his head looks a little long but i, I don't think he looks bad I, if, he, if he did I, I wouldn't mess with him man i i think i think this is the daredevil for me I really do. I think I need to hold off on that Marvel one, and I think I need to go with this, because if I got to buy two or more of the figures for $70 that I did not want, why not get a one with exceptional uh, articulation on it? And I like, the, I like the paint. It's got the more burgundy on it, and you can see the double D on the chest. Uh, depending on how it looks in person, this might be a definitive daredevil. Real talk, real talk. Why buy Bullseye and an Electra with big hair that cannot articulate her neck because of the, the molded plastic scope and just go on and spend you seven on a really, 70 on a really good Daredevil. Also for Mayfax real quick, uh, nobody really talks about, I need to see what's up with this uh, Snyder vs. Joker with the long hair, Jared Leto. I like that version of Joker better and this toy form looks, looks fire. I'm not really into movie, um, a comic toys like that I, I brought a few with marvel legends in the early days but i don't do it I, i'm mostly comic and um and cartoon figures and uh but this movie version of joker with the long hair look, looks like it, it could be something special I, I don't know we'll see also uh an interview on v vlad tv from a guy named peter triton from the united kingdom britain in the early 2000s um he was smuggling drugs from cocaine from ecuador actually coming from colombia and his pickup point was ecuador and he was doing it by impregnating cocaine into plastic material like uh in his instance it was uh camping tents yeah they gotten that uh futuristic with transporting drugs uh, so it wouldn't smell from dogs but make a long story short this is a powerful powerful interview right here on um, vlad tv peter triton um he has a book out and the book is about the time he spent in the ecuadorian prison for 10 years just to make a long story short he's gonna come out with another book the prequel that will go over his drug escapades but he had such a traumatic experience in ecuadorian prison that it, it is unbelievable remember that show super jail uh on, they used to come on um uh on oh, man on the cartoon network at night uh, when a guy flies off, he's like in a helicopter going to an island. That's basically where he went, hell. <laughs> I used to joke with my brother, like, I'm about to send you to super jail. He was like, what, hell? You know, in super jail, people was getting sawed and had just all types of horrific types of shit. And it goes on in real life in this third world country of Ecuador. Uh, just barbaric, um, 
prison riots where you know in America they'll have a prison riot throwing toilet tissue try to burn it down these people will st go kill each other uh, in the Ecuadorian prison there's one prison where the gangs run the prison the, the guards are just there to lock the doors the gangs run the prison their cells are open 24 7 they have guns in prison liquor cocaine uh, everything I mean he described the shootout that went on in a prison for two and a half hours with an Uzi. Not just a regular damn gun, a two shot. This motherfucker got an Uzi in prison. Can you imagine that in close range? Brr, brr, pop, 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 pop. Brr, brr, pop, pop. Going on for two and a half hours. That That is something serious and crazy. Barbaric stuff. People getting mutilated. A guy, he said a guy cut another guy's heart out. Took the heart out of him. The heart was beating. He was laughing. The heart stopped beating. He shook it. And the heart started beating again, pumping the blood out the rest. I mean, it, it, it is absolutely horrific. I mean, you could pay to uh, own your cell, get it renovated with an end shower, tile. This prison was different where you would have conjugal visits, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You could have uh, your wife over or if you wanted a, a, a whore off the street, you could bring her in from 9 to 5. I mean, crazy, crazy things. Um, and they said the murder rate is so wild in Ecuadorian prisons that... You uh you you could do 25 years for murder, but why you in prison? If you kill somebody, they don't give you no more time. You already serving your 25 year uh sentence. So it is a crazy thing. Um, and it was life changing for him, man. Just you need to uh check out this Vlad TV interview of Peter Triton uh from Great uh, from England. I think a cow uh, a town called Stroud. He's up from uh, around there, the English countryside. Uh, but great, dope. Check it out. Yep, check it out. Also, uh, X Scorpio, uh, another YouTuber, got his hands on the Trouble Bubble. Looks phenomenal. Uh, look, looks great. Trouble Bubbles, I mean, uh, the Televiper is a plain figure, but the Televiper look good. The different head sculpts look good. You can be African American, you can be a Caucasian, you can be just a, a man in a helmet. Three different head sculpts, which is lovely with G.I. Joe. Now, that's a deluxe package. A small vehicle, a figure with three different head sculpts where you can change up identity and also attachments that go onto your vehicle. And of course, I'm pretty sure the Televiper has a handgun or a knife on him. Great offering. I think it's like 50 bucks, 54 bucks. I think that's a great offer. It might be cheaper than that. I'm not sure. I think the Animal 2 packs are in their 40s and these vehicle things are in their 50s, man. But great. If you want to check that out, X Scorpio, I believe he's an overseas guy. He has it up on his YouTube. Check it out. Televiper looks like it's definitely worth army building. All right. So last on the toy news, we have um, McFarlane six pack Batman. And I just want to say I screwed up bad with it with this Lyle's figure files uh put this up two weeks ago and i commented on the comment i said dope for some odd reason i said no nah, it's not for me but it is for me I, I'm, I'm actually was looking for this um because i was looking for a 89 match batman and then with this six pack for 120 you get six batmans iconic batmans movie batmans uh for 120 20 dollars a piece for six of them but see what i didn't see is that they also come with a bat signal too with different insignias of different batmans from those movies man and i i, I screwed up let me tell you this this thing is sold out on five or six websites all across the board the guys got it up for 250 now on ebay hopefully i get another swing at this and i'm definitely going to get this because this is me this is me right here. Like, what am I? What am I talking about here? Like, why didn't I get these Batman's? Yo, this this is crazy. And if McFarlane can do anything, and I mean anything correct, he can make a Batman. I, I'll give him that. Some of them just. I, I think he makes his Batman's better than his Superman's. He's he's better off with, with with the Batman vibe. But these movie Batman's are good enough for me, and they they are the movie Batman's, and they they have the soft goods capes. So I, I fucked up. I fucked. I, I, I did. All right. So now we're gonna get into the hot topic uh, for this week. And this week is nothing uh, serious or nothing dramatic. Um, it's actually pretty fun. What is the best movie Batman? What is your best movie Batman? And of course, this will be my opinion. And I want you guys to chime in on the comments, man, and, and, and tell me what your opinion of the best Batman movie Batman. The best movie Batman for me. And this has nothing to do with nostalgia. Okay, I'm, I'm lying. It does have to do with nostalgia. But it's fact and points behind it too, though. The best movie Batman for me is Michael Keaton. Yes, it's nostalgia for me because it's the first serious, really good Batman um, I've seen on, 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 on TV or on a movie. 
one, because he's a great Bruce Wayne. He's convincing. He's convincing that he's savvy enough. He's uh, he's posh enough. Um, he's witty enough to be uh, a billionaire, who pretty much is almost like the mayor of the city. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that, but he's a, he, 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 he rubs shoulders with everybody. Uh, the commissioner in the daytime and the mayor. He's a great Batman because his menacing eyes. Now, if you see Michael Keaton out in the street, you'd be like, that, that's not Batman. That goofy looking dude? Nah, I, no way, no way. But when he puts that suit on, it's something about his face features, his uh, demeanor, his character that brings you to like, okay, I believe he's Batman. And then he also seems like he's a little crazy too. Like even Michael Keaton in his regular acting has these crazy like moments, almost kind of like a Jack Nicholson thing. And what are two great actors to put up against each other to uh, show their uh, two opposing sides um, and within themselves, the good side of themselves and the crazy twisted side of themselves. Because Joker was just a regular gangster. He wasn't a twisted gangster until he, uh, you know, fell. He was just a regular gangster guy. Uh, so for me, it, 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 it's Michael Keaton. Now, I'm going to go through all the different Batmans and I'll tell you why they don't live up to uh, Michael Keaton. I, like I said, I think Michael Keaton's a great Bruce Wayne. He's a great Batman. I think he did both of those evenly. Why? Because he's a great actor. Okay, let's go to Batman Part 3, Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer was a decent Bruce Wayne, but I don't think he was a great Batman. And it's not really his fault. It's just, it's just the way the movie is. The way the movie is set up. Batman Part 1 and 2 is like a star is born. Batman Part 3 is like Batman, let's sell some merchandise. And, and he knows it. It's like Batman knows he's a sex symbol. So he does certain things that's out of Batman's character. Like uh, when uh, Nicole Kitten asks him, what is it about him? And he's like, it's a car. Chicks dig the car. Batman don't do no shit like that, okay? He, do, he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't really talk about himself in a third person type way. And then another thing that's not his fault when he's getting dressed and they spin his ass around and you can see his ass. I mean, you know, it's starting to get to uh, I'm selling sex here and I'm selling merchandise. Now what I will say about Batman Part 3 is I think that fi that film needed to be like that because I think people would have got bored with Burton's approach. Maybe they wouldn't. Um, but from an adult standpoint, reason why, because when I saw Batman Forever, I didn't think of bad about it. I thought it was great. And they knew what, the way to go about it with the bright, vibrant colors like a comic book to attract children. Now, if you was an adult watching, you're like, all right, I can stand the first two, but this shit right here is eh. But if you're a kid, you're like, wow, look at Robin. They got Robin in. He's got a black and red. They got Batman. Ooh, look how he's flying through the sky. They did more aerial shots. Especially in the beginning when uh, he was trying to get Two-Face out of that bank, whether they did in, in part one and two. Um, they did aerial shots in part one and two, but to have stuff like that where he's swinging around like that, I, I just thought I, thought I thought it was a lot of shots like that. Um, and, I, and like I said, Jim Carrey was a great actor. Um, he, he brought that role of Riddler to life. He brought him more of like a twisted role of Riddler to life because he was so goofy. Um, but Batman Forever, don't let people trick you out. I, I still think it's a good movie. I, I will watch that over Batman 4. Now, will I watch Batman Forever over and over again? No. Um, but I, I, that's something I actually can sit through. Um, I think it's a decent movie. I just think when Batman Forever came out, it, they, 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 were, they were selling tickets then. That, that's what they used him for. Now, Batman and Robin, which is Batman Part 4 in the 90s, I love Clooney. I, I, Dust Till Dawn is one of my favorite movies. I think that's his role. He's a more of a dust up type guy, more of a whiskey and a and, 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 and a with no ice type guy. And, and and Seth Gecko was a perfect role for him. As far as Bruce Wayne, I don't think he was savvy enough. And then plus, he did a lot of moving like this, like shaking his head. You ever notice George Clooney when he's actually like, I don't know, but I know one damn thing. You know, he shakes his head a lot, and that wasn't working. And uh, just the Batman was way too corny. And that's not his fault. That was that was direction that the film wanted to uh, wanted to go to. Um, so Batman and Robin, that's something I would t take a few scenes at, but it, it was way overexposed. And by the time I watched that, when I was 14, so I was going uh, being a young man about to go into adulthood. And when I walked out of that theater, I don't remember being disappointed, but I was I was numb. I, I was uh, I wasn't like wow, that was great. All right, so let's get to the second series of Nolan's uh, Batman's with. Uh, 
uh, man, what's my guy name? Uh, Christian Bale. Okay, so Christian Bale is a convincing Bruce Wayne, but I think he overdoes it as Batman. And one is because of his voice. That, blah, blah, blah. That, that that's not working for me. That's not working for me. Batman is not that uh. I would I wouldn't say say vocal, but he's not that. He doesn't speak that imposing. Um, for more thing, Batman is quiet. So I think I think he overdid it with his voice on that. But I think as far as Bruce Wayne, I think he did a great job because he played an American Psycho. So he was used to playing a yuppie. He could play a yuppie role because in American Psycho, he played a great yuppie, even though he's a complete lunatic. But so he nailed Bruce Wayne. And I, I thought I think I think he's the best Bruce Wayne. I think he nailed it more than Michael Keaton. He, he did his damn thing in that. Yep. Yeah, so far as Bruce Wayne, I think I think he nailed that role. Um, especially when he pulled up in the Lamborghini with the two bras, one and sitting each other lap. That that's billionaire Playboy type shit, you know. And Alfred asking, "Will you be driving the Lamborghini, sir?" You know things like that. He knows how this man acts when he goes out. You know what I'm saying? He's playing the role. And then especially when everybody's drinking and he's drinking apple juice. You know, so it, that 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 was great. That was great. I thought I thought he was a great Bruce Wayne. I think he overdid it uh, as Batman. Ben Affleck is just uh, he's victim of just a shitty franchise in general. A franchise that could not get it right from the beginning and uh just left him on on a dead man's island wasted wasted a good batman you wasted a good batman because i believe ben affleck was a great older batman with the great streaks going on the side but then the physical attributes of batman batman is six four six five big uh, uh ben is a big guy and uh, i think i think the physical attributes of batman he nailed it there's there's no other actor who ever actually matched the batman he actually he actually has a natural chin of like kevin conroy's batman from the animated series um, but he just fell victim to a shitty franchise, man, and, 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 it, and it sucks. It, it really does. Um, uh, be honest with you, I want to say I, I, I probably might have rather seen him in, a, in the Dark Knight series than, than, than uh, Christian Bale. But Christian Bale did a good enough job to hold that down, though. And then last but not least, Robert Patterson. I, I haven't gave Patterson a chance yet. Um, I don't think those movies are bad. Um, I've seen a piece, a piece of it. Um, but I need to sit down and watch it fully. I don't think it's bad. I just think it's almost kind of run its course and he's kind of coming on the heels of the shitty franchise. So I know a lot of people out there like me, they just like, huh, I don't know. I, do I want to give that a go or not? But uh, those are pretty much all the Batmans. Each one of them are missing something. But I think Michael Keaton was the most balanced as far as actor wise as playing uh, Bruce Wayne and, and Batman. All the other Batmans either did one or the other thing better, or they just they they bombed out, you know, completely on uh on on on, on both aspects of it. And sometimes not not from their fault. Now this kind of almost like a second part uh to I just wanted to mention which uh which soundtrack was better uh from the Batman movies, the Batman Part One or Batman Forever? Because out of those two movies, those are the only two soundtracks that kind of like had chart topping hits on them uh all the other movies really didn't focus on soundtrack wise and why they were trying to sell tickets trying to sell just sell merchandise especially with the first batman then batman forever was like a revamp re trying to sell merchandise now the first batman had prince which is a great artist uh do their soundtrack i think entirely and uh all i remember is that he's had that half face paint and he's batman vicky bell which was cool he made like a little symphony but Whenever I think of that movie, I really don't necessarily think of him. Just except for the parts like where it was kind of iconic when Joker was in the art museum and all that, but just not for me. I think Batman Forever had a better soundtrack. Why you say that? Three, three really good songs that came off of that from three different genres. You got Seal with Power Ballad, uh, with the There's so much a man can tell you, so much he can say Dope, right? Iconic song, really lived past the movie You too had a dope song on there with a dope video and, and mind you, all these songs incorporated the movie and the song material greatly in the video You can go back and watch all these videos You too had a, a, a song called Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, which was fire fire video uh it, it, it interpreted the movie great and interpreted them they were kind of like comic book drawn and that and just a great song and at the end i remember uh this song had a great symphony piece from the guitar riff that it changed into see i love hip-hop but i love all music down to the fiber man so i can appreciate all music and you too uh slam that and then also i 
forgot that Method Man had a song on there from the hip hop uh, genre called The Riddler, which had a dope beat and had a dope uh, dope scenes of The Riddler while he's rhyming. It has a scene where there's a black light flashing showing his face and The Riddler's face when it first comes on. That's, that's fire. Just a fire song, man. And uh, it shows um, with, with Method Man uh, that he is the true face of Wu-Tang. Like, he can do anything. And RZA, you gotta thank God for his vision. Like, cause when all them other guys probably said, what, Batman, so I ain't doing nothing, man. How the street feel about that, man? That's corny. When they said they wouldn't, Method Man would step up to the plate and say, I will. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's our episode of Soapbox this week. I hope you guys enjoyed, man. I enjoyed talking to you guys about these different topics. Um, if you can, hit me up on my Instagram, uh, at Geppetto910. I'm trying to bolster up my Instagram following, trying to get down with the community and just uh, new ways to spread information, see uh, different pieces of art. If you guys pose up, if you just want to talk about something, you want to send me something, uh, hit at Geppetto910. And this is the Savage Land. We do this for the love and beauty of action figures, pop culture. And with that being said, until the next time, God bless. My power, my pleasure, 